You're listening to Ask When, the podcast. Folks from all walks of life talk about their daily hustle and bustle, living and celebrating life, sharing tips on becoming champions, especially for those who are muscling, mental, and physical disabilities. Ask When, the podcast with your host, who has mustered over 30 years living with cerebral palsy and going strong, author and cerebral palsy advocate, Wynn Charles. Ask when the podcast starts right now. Welcome to Ask When, everyone. And we are sitting in the midst of wildness called COVID-19 coronavirus, and I have the honor and privilege of talking to Kelly today. Kelly just told me that she's a nurse practitioner, so yes, she's an essential worker, and I hope this um, interview brings you guys insight as to why Kelly went into the nursing profession. And so I'm calling it Kelly, take it away. Thank you so much, Wynn. And thank you so much for having me today. So I'm Kelly Cole. I am a nurse practitioner and um, I'm also an online business owner, which was brand new for me just this past year. So I have went on many journeys these past year, like individual journeys, but um, one of them was to start an online business. And so I am, yes, essential. And in the middle of COVID-19, I'm still essential and I'm working. And I'm also working on um, getting more information out and trying to expand my reach with my message. So um, basically, I decided that I was going to start something based in my nursing experience and my nurse practitioner experience. I felt like there were so many patients and families in the hospital that really needed some stress and anxiety coping mechanisms that I was hoping to provide like a a program and really put together years of experience in doing that. And so while I was on this journey of creating this program, um, everything kind of unrolled about COVID-19 and coronavirus. And so I decided that in that moment when I realized kind of the trajectory and as I was working in the hospital, and watching all of my colleagues and knowing my own feelings um, towards it too, I decided that I was going to roll everything that I had made so far. And as far as like all of my content creation and everything I had done <clears throat> and just make it free for any healthcare provider. So basically I started down this whole path of knowing, um, kind of following my intuition and just feeling like there was so much of a need for this. And then when COVID-19 happened, I was like, oh my gosh. And I said, and you know what? I'm just going to like take what I take what I already have. And I'm going to say anybody that's dealing with this right now, that's a healthcare provider. It's all for like immediate, like immediate calming strategies. And so I said, it's just, it's, it's available for anybody right now. So I um, started down this path, just trying to make an impact and have that out there. And, um, yeah, that is kind of where we, where I started and where I am. And so in the moment I am like doing my nurse practitioner job and I'm working in the hospital for 12 hour days. And then I'm doing content creation when I'm home and doing that in the morning and the evening when my kids are asleep. So I, woman of many hats, woman of many hats. Now, Mm -hmm. um, Okay, I know you've uh, you probably got this question a million times and have seen the nurses on Facebook make videos. And so, what would be your advice? Because you're um, you're a central worker, and what would be your advice to anyone and everyone who's listening? right now who I personally love my nurses, love my nurses dearly, 
love any nuts that I come in contact <laughs> with. And I'll explain why in two minutes. But what would be your advice to after we come out of this to anyone that runs into a nurse other than give them a hug, which I want to do so badly, <laughs> um, particularly, I want to give the nurses a hug. But what would be your advice after we all come out of this? I think after we call out, all come out of this, if you see a nurse, it a great idea to just say, you're a nurse, thank you. I think that yeah. I've had a couple people, because um, I was wearing a outer jacket that had a logo on it and somebody knew I was working at the hospital and I was just walking um, to my car and they said, thank you. And I was like, oh, you're, you're welcome. And then they said, because I can see that you work at the hospital and thank you. And that it really meant a lot because in this moment, you know, it's, it's such a weird dichotomy going on because you have everybody that is literally, you know, they're, everyone's lives are completely upside down, but we have the people that are stuck at home wanting and itching just to get out and have their normal life. And then we have the people that are essential that want to be essential and want to be helping as much as possible. And then we have the people that are essential that are really scared to still be essential and have the possibility of contracting it or coming back and bringing it back to their families. And it's a reality right now. So it's very complex. It's very complicated. And it's, um, you know, there's a little bit of everything in it for, for everybody's individual experience, but yeah, it's, it's intense. Yes. So you guys, um, I love my nurses dearly. I have always loved them for um, 30, almost 33 years now because I um, I was born with cerebral palsy, aka a neurological disability. And so NICU nurses, you name it, every nurse on the planet to give. Yeah, I even yep. have a um, let's just say a Mountain Dew induced sign with my name on it. Thank you very much, <laughs> and I still have from '87 because <laughs> the um, nurses tend to drink a lot of Mountain Dew, so they um, to get the creative energy out. Um, yes. And I know nurses now get their creative energy out no matter in what way they can. So, as I said, when we all come out of this, I want you guys to either thank a nurse or do something creative for that nurse because nurses are my heroes right now, even though I don't say it. And, yeah, nurses and doctors on my heels right now just because they are doing what they can. I love it. Thank you so much for that. You know who my heroes are right now? It's just anybody out there trying to spread positivity and being the light because I think well, there is, you know, it's a tough time right now. People are yes. struggling a bit. So all and of that. Kelly, what is your favorite book? My very favorite book, um, well, I have so many and it's so hard because I really do read a lot, but I think the one that I have kept going back to the most is called The Immortal Diamond by Richard Rohr. And so that book is um, it's very spiritual, but it is basically um, something that I have read over and over because it has just allowed me to break down and re-put together everything that I thought was, you know, spirituality and religion and combined with your, you know, inner thoughts to kind of connect to the universe. And that is my favorite book. <laughs> and if your best friend had to write a book about you, what would the title be? Uh, I think at this moment, it would be like that crazy driven girl because 
I feel like I am in the, like you said, I'm wearing so many hats, which is completely true, but I feel so driven towards all of it. And I feel like I'm called to do all of it. And I am just meant to be putting this, you know, bigger impact out in the world. And so um, I think that would be my book title, Crazy Driven Girl at the moment. Okay, crazy driven <laughs> human. Okay, I get it. And so um, what is your morning routine? Um, in the morning, so it varies depending if I'm going into work or not. But every morning I will wake up, I will have um, kind of like a meditative type of moment where I can read. Um, I like to read scripture and I like to read affirmations and look at my like vision board that I have. So kind of set my intention for the day while I'm getting ready. So all of that, there's so much stuff on my morning, on my, um, my bathroom sink. It's hilarious because it's all my stuff I need to like look at in the morning to get my head in the right place before I start my day. So, um, I have all of that stuff and then I will get ready and look at my phone for my schedule that day to make sure I know exactly what I have to do. And usually a list of stuff that I might've made the night before to make sure I'm taking off everything I have on my to-do list. So that is my morning routine. And I usually, I will also plus or minus working out depending what's going on. Yeah. And if you had to move houses and only take five things with you plus your family, what would they be? Oh, let's see. I, well, I definitely need my laptop and my Kindle because I always need to work and I always need to read. So those two things, I need my comfiest tennis shoes so that I can like work out for real. And I need my fridge because I really, I like to eat and I need to eat my certain things that I like, or I'm not that happy. So that, and probably my special cooking pans that I love. Uh, <laughs> More uh, food than trick. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. As long as, and Kelly, you might've heard this terminology, but um, my fan base has heard of it. They just don't know what it is. Are you uh, food-centric as in microbiome cooking or as in I'll eat anything that is put in front of me? Or what's your cooking style? Um, so I will, I pretty much go with the philosophy that I try to do as many fruits and vegetables as possible. And then um, like low glycemic is kind of what I aim yeah. for because I find that I just do better that way. Um, yeah. And so, and otherwise, yeah, anything in front of me, it doesn't, it doesn't, yep. those are the only criteria. Yep. <laughs> no, I, uh, with this shelter in place mode, I'm getting to the point where if people, my stepmom or my age put food in, me, I will eat it because oh, yeah. I uh, my background is Irish, and what ends up happening is the Irish came with meat and potatoes background. So um, I I didn't realize in COVID nineteen that my family heritage would kick in. Whereas <laughs> if you put something in front of me i will eat it whether i like it or not <laughs> it's true and i think that there's so much of like you're just so out of your normal routine right now and we're bored so i keep i'm almost gonna put like a lock on my pantry door for my children because they're like what are we doing now i'm like well we just eat breakfast and they're like we're hungry and i'm like i don't think you're hungry i think you're just a little bored we're out of our routine so i'm like yeah let's do something now let's go yeah, outside exactly. let's it's go hard. outside let's no but i will i will eat i just despise i'm not as big as a house like now because Although my metabolism is high, thank goodness. But um, I am just, oh, I will put 
anything in my mouth that I can bleep nowadays. And those of you who know me personally know that's not my habit. But once in a while, out of this, I'll be perfectly fine again. So funny. I know. And the struggle is real because oh, it is. Stu- struggle is real. Yeah. Oh. And so, Kelly, do you have any questions for me? Yes. What are you, like, tell me what was the spark that made you start this podcast? Well, I at the at the time I had just lost my mom, my um, biological me. mom, and and then I wrote a book about her, a book about my life to get um to get it all out. At the time, I was transferring jobs, and I transferred jobs back into education. I shouldn't have transfer jobs back into education. I should have became a solo entrepreneur now, but I was transferring jobs back into education. And I I thought, well, if my education job walks away, I need an income. And I, unfortunately, um, because my school, my ex school where I taught, didn't um didn't have a plan for what was going on right now. Mm-hmm. I emailed them and I said, "Well, do you want me to come back to work April fifteenth?" And they go, "Well, one spring break, we don't have a plan." But they said to me, um, "Self isolation is the best thing." for you and I'm like bye guys because <laughs> you don't have a plan you are on the spring break and so now you need to scramble and my um my whole thing with them was I want to be useful I want to be useful I want to be useful and of course they never knew where to put me because of my disability and mm-hmm. I'm like bye guys I'm on my own So I quit my job as of March 13th and got laid off and have been creating content full time, doing this podcast full time. I love it. And you know what? Sometimes, I mean, they always say, you know, when a door closes, a window opens. And I feel like I've just been in this situation where I've been following what keeps opening in front of me and it's powerful. And sometimes it really leads you to amazing places. And, you know, you are the type of person who so many people are going to look at and say, look what she's doing. And I can do that. And I think that's an inspiration win. Yeah. Well, well, there you guys go. I mean, I don't consider myself an inspiration. I consider my, Self a walking miracle, <laughs> trying to keep myself up, right? But um, to those of you who think of me as an inspiration, thank you very much. Mm-hmm. But Kelly, what would you say to the nurses out there who are listening, who are just burned out, burned out? Uh, this coronavirus is about to hit the floor in the break room and can't do um, personal protective gear, thank you very much, can't do the math, can't do anything. What would you say to those nurses and doctors who are just burnt out and they're sitting on the floor in a break room listening to this podcast or... Um, listening to something, what would you say to them? I would say that you always have to put yourself first. And so in this moment, it is so easy to run to the fire and do what we have to do, but that you can't do it at your own risk and you can't burn the candle at both ends. So you have to take care of yourself. You have to take moments for yourself. 
And if you're feeling really overwhelmed by everything, you have to, you know, have those strategies to get yourself back into the better place and, and, you know, find your strategy, whatever it is, to be able to make sure you have your PPE in place, have your, you know, whatever you need that's going to be comforting to you to make sure you're safe, but then mentally and, you know, emotionally, you also have to take care of yourself there too, because you can't pour from an empty cup. So. Nope. Nope. And Kelly, where can people find you? They can find me. We have a, um, a blog, which is energy and the number two thrive tribe.com. So it's energy to thrive tribe. And then we also have a link. If there's any healthcare provider out there who needs immediate calming strategies, the free link for that module of our program is a bit.ly link. It's bit.ly forward slash calming now. So, well, I appreciate it, you guys. And Kelly, your episode will be out in the next couple of weeks. But I'm sure doctors and nurses will need this day in, day out um, because podcasts are evergreen. So I'm sure that after we all come out of this, doctors and nurses will still need you to guide them. And I appreciate the time of you guys. I definitely appreciate Kelly's time. And as I said, be safe, be strong, be happy, guys. And we'll make it through with this, you guys. I know we will. And so I will catch you guys later. Bye, you guys. You just listened to Ask Win, the podcast. To become a guest in the show, visit our website at askwin.weebly.com or call 816-591-3399. Just look for Danielle. Connect with Wynn on Twitter at Win Kelly Charles and like our Facebook page at Butterflies of Wisdom. You can also purchase Win's book through Amazon.com or get a copy of the audiobook through Audible. Ask Win the podcast.